Howdy, John Hartell here coming to you from outside the beautiful town of Beaumont, Texas. Just in the country, not quite the city. Um, just moved into the home and have one issue. I have two pups, have a backyard, half an acre, and uh, no fence. So I had to look up uh, an efficient way that I wanted to do that was not very costly, still allowed for an open concept of being able to see not necessarily a privacy fence, but to keep our two dogs. I have an English Mastiff and an Australian Shepherd, both one big and the other one likes to run around. So I need to contain them. And uh, as far as doing a little bit of research, I, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet, but uh, Central to West Texas uses a lot of, this is called horse panel or cow panel. Hog panel is six by eight. This is four by four squares. But you can utilize this. The dimension from here to here is three eighths of an inch. That's when I learned about dado. It's not just an Italian word. I don't know if it's an Italian word or not. But a dado is a groove that you can cut into the wood. And if you check this out, you could put that seamlessly right into the wood panel like that. So what a dado is, basically two saw blades and a cutter blade that goes on the interior of that. So basically, you take a saw table, set up for a dado. This one actually will do 3 8 which is what's required. And you just slide it over and it cuts the groove going through. And then basically, you have a modular unit. You can do it 8 feet, 10 feet, however long you want your dado, however long you want your fence. This fencing right here is 4 by 4 squares. It comes in a 50 inch height. 16 feet long so I had to trim them out. Trimming them out you can use cutters or you can use this little uh, miter saw or a cutting wheel set up like that but it takes about two seconds to do it instead of having to use a bunch of leverage. So, Alright before I begin I just want to go over a few of the materials that uh, I found to make this process go really easy. You can invest in one of these contractor style calculators. It makes for people who are really bad with math like myself uh, really a, a breeze at it because you can type in feet and inches and you know one foot three inch times three and look at that three foot nine. I didn't have to do anything or factor or fractions or anything like that. Really cool tool to have in the tool belt. Other than that simple things. Make sure you have an array of levels. Different small size long Speed square, very important. Safety is the most important. Have face masks for using the grinder. Got eye protection for using anything else. Hand protection, especially using concrete. That should mess up your hands. Pardon my French. Tape for uh, just masking things and it makes for a good line whenever you don't wanna to have to use a Sharpie. Having a good pencil. <laughs> Got this little cool thing right there. But having a good pencil and a scratch pad always works great. And then a string. This works for making sure everything's level whenever you're trying to uh, run a straight line with your fence. And don't forget to have some kind of a persuader, whether it be a rubber mallet or a heavy maul of sorts. And in this case, there is a saw fluid, which makes things cut a little bit smoother. I'm down to the last panel that I'm putting in and I'm putting in a four foot gate here. So basically, as you can see here, all the way down, it's got the seamless setup of the dado running all the way through. As far as it going in, it locks into place. The great part about it is they're modular. It, you can do it at any dimension you want to. I ended up going with eight foot center so I didn't have to worry about sag. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this last setup here and uh, I'll end up doing my mud board down here at the bottom, or rot board, so uh, you get to uh, have this as a base to hold it up. It also keeps any kind of uh, weathering happening to the fence directly. So I'm gonna measure this right here. It's like we're at 36 and a half. We're gonna come up here just for good measure. <laughs> anyway, and 36 and a half, which means my poles are level, or plumb, I should say. But uh, anyway back to the saw table and I'll show you how this thing goes together. What we have is I have it set up, measured just a little while ago, got my dimension between the two poles and this is my vertical runs which are going to be 46 and a quarter and this excuse me was 36 and a half I believe is what it was. 
So I've got those and I'm about to, uh, as you can see, they don't have a dado in them yet, but I'm about to run through the old machine here and uh, get back with you. Here we go. Something like that. I failed to pull out all my little sticker things. You might want to do that next time because it ends up hitting staples. But hey, you know what? Oh well. Just to give you an idea, I did all this factoring, drew it up on paper, and uh, once I learned the dado, I realized that I bought too much wood. I was actually going to sandwich pieces together and then put a cap on top of it, but once I read about the dado, I thought, Phew, I'm using twice as much wood. So, guess what? I get money back in my pocket and that means I get to eat next week. <laughs> All right, so I didn't go over exactly what I'm doing with the dado, but as far as the setup, typically a two by four is about one and a half inch by three and a half inch. I have the depth of my dado at one inch, which leaves me about half an inch to play with. And my panels, I'm actually cutting about one inch short, about half an inch and half an inch that I have to play with inside the dado. That way, if it's not exactly perfect, I don't give, you know, I almost said the S word, so. Either way, just playing with it, I just, it, give yourself an allowance because you will have about an inch of play in there. And if you cut an inch shy, that puts you about half an inch in there with your material. And it'll allow you to have a little bit of play in there whenever you're at tying this together. Whenever I start screwing this together, you'll understand. The reason why I went with four inch holes is because uh, the less chance of a dog or my dog having his snout in a bigger panel and getting bit. But it works out that four works into eight feet very well. It just so happens that this 36 inch measurement that I'm having for this particular panel, because it's the gate panel, uh, 36 is a factor of four, but the unfortunate thing is you have to take off an inch to allow for the dado gap. So the way I have it set up, it's 35 inches it's on the outside edge of the tape. Then I'm gonna cut with the grinder on the outside and just use that as my runner. All right, I have everything done, set up for 35 inches. Uh, you can use bolt cutters for this. Why? I mean, power tools, man. in and eight screws is all it takes to hold this thing together my original design 20 so how many screws does it take to build a fence all of them <laughs> so it's as simple as lining up the dado with the groove And just like that, yeah, like Lincoln Logs for adults. And there's that piece. I had to build 22 of these. 
this is one of the smaller ones. All the rest of them were just shy of eight feet or so, but it allowed for the dip. So as you can see there, it's starting to come together. And right here, you can see where the difference is on the, uh, I guess, the, the takeoff of why I did one inch short. See how it extends back here? You end up putting the dado in, and it gives you a little bit of room to smidge it if you have to. And there it goes. So. I don't even have screws in it and it's all ready to get So, how about that? So now I just screw it together. <laughs> so you just line that dude up right there. Doesn't have to be perfect. You'll start a fence project wanting it to be like bulletproof. And then by the end of it, you're just like, it's just a fence. But build a simple one like this. Takes a little planning in the beginning, but that's nice and flush. Good enough for me. Ain't nothing that uh, a hammer can't fix whenever it comes down to actually doing the business. Just like this. Boom. full panel. The good thing about it is I can probably almost guarantee that it's hurricane proof because it is sturdy yet air will blow right through it. How about that? Let's get it over to the spot. So what I'm about to do here is the last step. As you can see it's the final panel. Thank goodness. Between weather and southeast Texas it's hot. But finally on the last panel. So um, put in the rock board, mud board. It's the one that put at the base that actually supports this and this guy so uh, find some situations you'll want to have an extra hand but you don't always have one so I'll show you how to make a quick level of something that goes all the way down and as a bonus at the end I'll show you how I did every single one of these posts by myself doing this by yourself or with a hand it's nice to have the extra cut ins to where you can shim a little bit but uh, basically what I'm gonna do I've got my speed square I made a line here carried it over to the inside that way I can smidge it up and be lined up right there so what I'll do is I'll toenail it in here I'm gonna put the level over here and I'll toenail it in on this side and boom panel will go next so I'm gonna do that now Get it flush on the outside. There we go. There we go. Nice and flush. That will hit over with a hammer shortly. But you do this and then toss this whole level on there. And I've already drawn my line just for reference. Get my screws started. Come back on a level and we are level. All right, in goes the pen. I found that standing on this side is the best way. 
doing it by yourself is not. There you go. Once you get it in, get Mr. Persuader over here. and it slid right into place. I'll say that each one of my poles is plus or minus, if it's not dead on, about an eighth, and you just use a set of ratchet straps between the two poles if you need to smidge it or pull one away. Luckily, this one worked out, so, What you do is ensure that my baseboard is all lined up there, it looks good, and then make sure we're up. Looks like I can go a little bit more, and that is how you put in a panel. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty much it, panel to panel. Uh, if I wasn't doing the video, it would probably take me about 10 or 15 minutes, even if it was the long one. And, uh, you know, I'll do a quick walkthrough uh, of how everything goes. All the pieces that I cut off, because they come in uh, five foot tall panels by 16 feet, all the extra panels that you don't end up needing, because the ground is never perfect and level, Sure, you can order a, a load of sand to come and level in the high spots, low spots on the side of the fence over there. Or you can use this excess material and staple it in, stick it down on the ground, and the pumps can't get out. Tractor supply came in handy. Got me a 10 foot gate so I can drive my truck in. Ta da! This is a latch setup made by Speco. It allows you to open it inside. It also allows you to open it outside. It's designed so you can be on a horse. Lean over and it up. But in my case, just going through a lawnmower and a Chevy truck. So uh, pretty cool little setup right there. Very simple. And uh, as you can see, we've uh, got our fenced-in area. It all came out pretty level and uh, pretty much one dimension times as many poles as you see. One thing I will add, the longer you wait after you do your pole, things can happen. You see right here, this guy, just an example. It's square at the bottom. I let it sit for about a week and it started to twist. No lie, this panel right here was over here. Straight up and it started to turn. So I had to use everything that I could think of to uh, try to get it square again. But that was the turning point, the turnbuckle, and it's out of alignment. I'm not an engineer, but it still pisses me off. But here you go, end up having this. And as you can see the data, one thing that I might have done is put in weep holes at the bottom, but I can still come in from the bottom side. I ain't worried about that. The plan are coming through to trim it off at about two and a half to three inches and put some fancy cap on top of it. Maybe even one with a light. And then we got our little forefoot, which is basically what we're doing on the other side. Exactly the mirror. The dimensions came out three 
sixteenths different as far as the panel goes. So my math came out pretty good for this project. But once again, have that little simple gate there. And uh, it also goes to the inside. I mentioned that uh, I was going to show you a way that I came up with to be able to level my studs by myself. And uh, more or less, you need four clamps and two boards and two levels. Four, two, two. Anyway, so you get your this way and this way. Clamp those on there. And then you put these on there as well. And I tell you, I've always ever had a friend helping and leveling plumb and then you tamp it in to where it stays in there. Well, not everybody's always available whenever you're trying to do a fence. I'm able to see level here and I'm able to see level here. Typically I have it different, but uh, <laughs> once the fences are actually together, it's too wide for me to use most of my clamps. But I had a little bit different configuration whenever I was doing it but more or less just have one plane this way, one plane this way, holding onto your post, and then literally all it is is just tapping until you get to your desired dimension. Not every single one of these boards, it's a four by four post, is actually three and a half by three and a half, but they're not even that. Some are three and nine sixteenths, some are three and five eighths. So if you do all your math, it works out that everything works till you get to the end, and then you're like, wow, I'm about three inches short. So, that's why you put a gate there. So I ended up having this little small panel here for the gate, this made the balance. So every single one of these fit my 93 and a seven, or 93 and a half inch panel in between the 97 inch apart boards, because that accounts for the inch and a half here, the other inch and a half to the center, and then so on. So it ended up being 207 feet of panel all the way around. Well, uh, I hope you liked the video. If you like, I don't know where I'm going to put the like thing on it, but you can hit like and subscribe. Uh, I typically do videos that don't previously exist. Obviously, there's a plethora of YouTube videos of how to build a fence and everything like that, but not one like this. So if you're looking for something that's simple, efficient, uh, it does have a little wiggle room to it, but as far as just decent planning, anything like that, and about a thousand bucks, maybe plus or minus, I mean, only thing this, I have to wait a little bit before I can stain it. And uh, pretty much is it. Uh, here again, I enjoyed doing it. It's nice whenever a project comes out and it's complete. And uh, the only thing I have to worry about now is stepping in dog shit. <laughs>